everyone, what's up and welcome back to my channel and welcome to this week's training vlog. If you guys don't know, I post vlogs every single Thursday, so make sure to go ahead and press subscribe right now, press the alert button so that every time I post a video, you will be notified. On Mondays, I post podcasts, and if you don't see one posted, it means that it was just an audio solo episode, so make sure to subscribe to my podcast, The Evolved Emily Show. It's all about lifestyle, mindset, personal development, spirituality, all of the things that make me me, and it's just me sharing my journey of evolving and sharing different guests and speakers who have been evolving in their own lives. So definitely check it out. The podcast is a huge passion of mine. And if you're missing out on the podcast, you're missing out on so much. There's only so much I can do in these YouTube vlog updates and there's just so much more depth there. So make sure to check it out. So in today's video, I wanna share with you the prep mindset. There's a lot of things I've learned in my training, nutrition, cardio, and just the overall mindset to have for a successful prep. And this is something that you could take and apply to just different goals that you have have in life in general and especially if you're a weight loss client or somebody that is really focusing on your fitness and nutrition these tips will specifically help you but I hope that you can apply some of these tips regardless if you're focusing on your fitness and nutrition or not right now I first want to start with a prep update so prep for me what it looks like right now I'm training six days a week I have one full off day I am doing cardio about 30 minutes a day right now I have a mixture of moderate cardio where I'll normally do like 30 minutes on the Stairmaster or I'll do in incline walking. I like to change it up a little bit so I'm not doing the same thing every day. Also, if I'm really sore from legs, I don't usually want to do the Stairmaster. I'll usually want to do the incline walking and I just make sure that I'm sweating, that I'm feeling good and I really work up a good sweat. I also do some HIIT cardio sessions. I have three a week right now. So in those HIIT cardio sessions, I will do a 20 second sprint, all out sprint and then a minute and 40 seconds of moderate pace recovery. I'm checking in once a week with my coach. You guys know my coach is Jamie with Fit body fusion and I absolutely love working with her it's been really amazing we've had one posing session so far where we have really identified a new front pose which I'm really excited about so we've been working on just making sure that right now even though I'm not super lean yet like really focusing on those poses and you know figuring out how to showcase the best physique overall posing is something that I know can be uncomfortable when you feel like you're not super lean and you feel like nothing looks good because you're not lean yet but just remember it's important to start practicing that now because you want to make sure that when you're on stage it's literally muscle memory you've done it so many times that you could do it with your eyes closed and do it while you sleep and that's another tip if you guys have never practiced posing with your eyes closed try it it's hard and it'll really help you to focus on that mind muscle connection because like I said by the time you get on stage you want to make sure that it's literally automatic it's something that you just do all the time with your eyes closed and there's no way that you could mess it up quick life update you guys know that I've been living in a hotel I've been on a contract job for a really amazing opportunity that I've been just so thankful to be a part of and now my contract is coming to a close there's about another two and a half weeks of my contract left which means that I should keyword should <laughs> I know not to plan out my life because things change literally all the time I should be heading to Texas to my home in two and a half weeks and if that happens I will be so incredibly overjoyed and thankful and so happy and I, I haven't gotten to live in my house yet but it's there <laughs> my parents are so gracious to move everything in and my, my stepmom Shanna, she's been so great and helping to decorate and move things in and organize and she's probably doing more than I even know about so I'm just so thankful for my family support in that but I would be overjoyed and just so thankful to get to be in Texas and to live in my house and to prep from the comfort of my home with gyms that I love and that would just it will be so incredible when I get to do that so I just wanted to share that with you guys because I'm really looking forward to that and when that happens oh it's just gonna be so beautiful and I know that the time will be perfect whenever it does happen so as you guys can see I'm trying not to get my hopes up for this two and a half weeks but that's when my contract is up so I think that's when I will be heading home so that's just a little life update now I want to go ahead and go into the prep mindset first and foremost with progress weight check-ins all of that like everything having to do with checking in and assessing your progress mistakes that I've made in the past is something like weighing every single day and measuring how I feel about how prep is going based on my weight as a woman especially your weight is going to fluctuate so much so relying on the scale it's really not an accurate way to track your progress and I think previously something that I would do as well is like if I slipped up on my diet I would weigh the next day and if 
the weight didn't really go up, it would almost justify that I could get away with a little something. So I'm not sure if you felt like that before, but that's not really a good healthy habit to have. So I really suggest not doing that. I really suggest not slipping up on your diet and not cheating on your diet ever, but especially don't allow your weight to justify you cheating on your diet because it's not an accurate sense of progress. Definitely don't rely on the scale. Definitely try not to be in the habit of weighing every single day and don't use that as your overall measure of progress. So with updating you guys with my prep, I wanna go ahead and share week one with you guys compared to finishing week four. So that'll be on the screen right here or somewhere right here. I want you guys to know that today I weighed in and I weighed in at 142 pounds. That is where I started my prep four weeks ago. And you guys know that I've gotten my lowest was like 140, I believe. I mentioned this in the last video. And I've had a lot of things happening here and there that have really affected my weight. And then today weighing in at 142 again, I was just a little discouraged. So as you guys see, I still have to remind myself to practice what I preach in this. I was discouraged until I looked at my check-in photos and looked at week one to week four. And clearly what I see is a lot of body recomposition. So of course my weight does need to go down because I have a lot to lose in order to get stage lean. But truthfully looking at the photos, I think that my body's just doing a lot of recompositioning right now. It's really holding on to muscle, which I'm really happy about, and it's shedding the fat that's around that. And the scale's not necessarily going down like I would like it to yet, but I know that if I stick to my diet, stick to my training, my nutrition, I really prioritize my sleep, I know that the progress will come. And so my other tip with assessing your progress and your weigh-in and things like that is first and foremost, whenever you wake up in the morning on an empty stomach, that's when I would do your posing and your check-in photos. After after you do that, really ask yourself how you feel and assess how you feel after that and then step on the scale. Sometimes you'll feel great and it won't really align with the scale. Sometimes the scale won't say that you've dropped but you feel good and you feel tighter. So the scale really is not everything. And then lastly I would say with your check-ins is to rely on your coach. Put your head down and focus and don't allow yourself to pick apart your progress photos, to pick apart your weight, to really just nitpick at yourself. That's not your job. If you have a coach and you trust them and you have a great coach, then put all of that in their hands. Put all of that stress in their hands because here's the deal. If you're following your diet, if you're doing your cardio, if you're crushing your training, that is your job and that is only your job. Obviously posing as well, but that is your job. Once you've done your job, hand it off to your coach. When they need to make changes, they will make changes. So previously a mistake that I think I've made is placing too much mental energy and focus on what my photos look like and do I look better than the previous week, which is only one week, <laughs> and hyper-focusing and hyper stressing on you know did I make progress or not if you have a coach that is their job and they will make changes when they need to so take a deep breath and don't allow yourself to spend mental energy on something that is just simply not your job that's your coach's job so let them do it okay with diet and nutrition one of the mistakes that I've made when I was younger and just now getting into this I was way too food focused so I remember back in the day I definitely spent time on Yelp and I was like looking at food my friends would send me foodie pages that you know with the crazy like burgers and desserts and things like that and now like number one where did I even have the time to sit there and look at food online? I couldn't even carve out time to do that even if I wanted to now so that's helpful but truthfully I was just very food focused and I was very food focused on the foods that I couldn't have and that created an unhealthy focus and desire for those things. Whatever you feed grows so if you're feeding your desire for all these foods that you can't have right now that's gonna grow and oftentimes it turns into an unhealthy relationship with food so if you catch yourself doing that cut it out right now there's a time and a place for you to have those things and you should go and enjoy those things but you should not sit there and hyper focus on it and if it's not your season to be able to go out to dinner and have pizza or go out to dinner and get some dessert then accept that be in the season that you're in if you're in the season of dieting and doing you know your competition prep or going after whatever lifestyle goals it is that you have follow pages that give you healthy recipes for food follow other pages of people that are dieting that encourage you to keep up your diet and show you that diet doesn't have to suck that you can make it taste good and things like that like really you guys just have to be so intentional about what you're feeding your mind every single day so feed your mind with what's gonna encourage you for the season and the track that you're currently on another mistake that I made when it comes to dieting and nutrition is just going with the flow throughout the day meaning maybe I'm tracking my macros and so I'll just like put in breakfast and the next you know next meal comes and I'll eat whatever and when I go through the flow and it's not already pre-planned and pre-organized I find that 
I am at the end of the day and I have like one fat, 30 carbs and 27 protein. It's like the most random macros left and it's really hard to exactly hit those or to get within a normal you know, range of hitting those. So what I've found is instead of just going with the flow and tracking my macros as I go throughout the day, it's so much better to pre-plan and pre-organize. Now I've shared with you guys before, I do have a little bit of a strategy with that. I really like to have what I'm gonna have for breakfast. I put that in and then I like to put in my very last meal for the day. The very last thing that I'm gonna eat that I know I'm going to really enjoy because I have something to look forward to. And then I just plug in the rest of the meals throughout the day and kind of fill in the rest of the day that way. Another thing that I do now is I record exactly what time I'm going to eat what. So if the first meal is at 5 a.m., then I know that my next meal is going to be at like 11 a.m. <laughs> um, and just kind of every three hours or so after that, maybe the last meal is, you know, there's a two hour gap because the last meal is like something small. But I always know that I have a cutoff time of when I want to eat my food. And usually I want to eat my last meal about two hours before bedtime. That way when I'm trying to go to bed, my body's not busy digesting things. And so I found that by attaching a time to what time you're gonna eat. It also helps to keep you accountable in between meals so that if you finish a meal and you're like, oh, I'm hungry, you can look at the clock and say, okay, I only have an hour and a half before the next meal. So let me drink some BCAAs. Let me have some sparkling water. Let me go for a walk and see if I'm actually just bored. <laughs> Another tip with the diet and the nutrition is similar to not allowing myself to be hyper-focused on the foods that I can't have. I've really focused on not allowing myself to be too hyper-focused on making every single meal the most important thing. Like now I think I'm just too busy to care that much about my food. But if you find yourself, even with the meals that you do have, just like hyper-focusing, hyper-analyzing, making sure that it's, you know, macroing everything out and making sure that it's just this crazy experience for every single meal, I think sometimes it's just too much emphasis on food like there's a lot of things going on throughout your day there's conversations there's mindset things that you could be working on there's books you could be reading like I just think that either way even if it is focusing so much on making your diet perfect or focusing so much on all the things you can't have at the end of the day I think it's just too much focus on food my tip would just to be not to allow yourself to hyper focus on food when it comes to training a mistake that I've made in the past is thinking that more was better or harder was better better. And the truth is, and the way that I operate now, is intentionality and effectiveness is what I go after. So that really means putting your ego aside and making sure that every single rep and every single moment of that rep is perfect and it's exactly what you came for. Really focusing on both the concentric and the eccentric parts of the movement. Another mistake I've made is overtraining my CNS, my central nervous system. Meaning I, when I would feel that my central nervous system was completely broken down and shot, I would like really push through that and now I just take a rest day or I take an active rest day and I do a really light cardio session and I focus on stretching so I think now rather than just working hard 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 I really try to work smart I really try to work with my body and not try to force my body to do anything it's one thing to push through a hard workout when you're a little bit sore or you're tired but it's another thing to push your body beyond what it should be doing because oftentimes if you'll actually rest if you'll actually recover if you'll do an active rest day if you'll do some extra stretching focus on your foam rolling that will actually serve you so much more in the long run than just pushing your body to crazy extremes with training there's a mindset opportunity that is yours to take if you would like to have it and so there's all these like opportunities to train your mindset and it's not essential it's not something you have to do but it's something that I like to do and something that I see as a really cool challenge so previously if I was in the middle of a set and I'm at that point where I want to quit I would allow myself to in a sense get a little emotional about it meaning I would be going through it and I would just be like it's so intense right and I would allow that to show so my challenge to myself and my mindset growing opportunity was go through the pain and learn that this is where you're meant to live so don't make it a big deal and try to be as stoic as possible about it so now I'll go throughout pain and people around me would have no idea that I'm in so much pain that I could possibly cry <laughs> um, and instead I've truly trained my mind to like focus on like living there and staying calm. I think there's something really big about being able to stay calm under pressure. And essentially that's what it is. I mean, quite literally, you're under pressure of the weight that you're trying to push. So for myself, I've really tried to focus myself on doing that. I have taken a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu course before and I've taken a few and it's really cool. I'd love to get into that one day when I can carve out some time. But what I really loved about it is that it's really intense and there's a lot of pressure and you have someone right on you and it can be really scary and really pressured feeling 
but what they teach you is to learn to remain calm under pressure and to figure out how to move and navigate within that. And I think there's something really powerful about that. So I've applied that to my own training and um, yeah, so when I'm sitting there and I just have a stoic face or I just like get this intense look on my face, it's really just me trying not to cry or show how much pain I'm actually in. And for me, again, it just really showed me how to stay calm under pressure. And there's a lot of actual life situations that that can help you in. So it's not just for training, it's for life as well. Another tip that I have for training is when you're in the set and you're in those reps that hurt so bad, I'm talking like, let's say that you have 12 reps and you're on rep eight and it's just killing you. You start to tell yourself, you're like, oh, it's hurting so bad. And you can like really get in your head without even trying. Once it hits that, it's like you're on this hill and if you can have the right mindset, something can switch and then it's easier to keep going and it's and you start going like downhill in a good way meaning like it doesn't hurt as bad it's kind of like when you're running and you get that runner's high when all of a sudden it was really hard wasn't enjoyable then you get the runner's high it feels amazing you can do this in your training too so what I tell myself when I get to those reps is this is the rep that matters this is the rep that determines whether or not you reach your goal and I tell myself that I'm like this is where it counts anyone can do those reps before but what are you gonna do right now in this moment because most people would give up most people would quit most people would have bad form or do a bad rep so what are you gonna do and those days in prep when you were struggling to get even one rep out don't think about the entire workout don't think about even the entire set tell yourself one perfect rep just like I say every single day is day one because if you sit there and you think about an eight-week prep a 24-week prep a 30-week prep but almost a year prep <laughs> you think about that you're gonna get so overwhelmed you're gonna want to quit don't think about that you only get one day today is your only opportunity so tell yourself today is day one and it's the only day that I have same thing in your training session this is the only rep that I have and you tell yourself that over and over and over again and then you tell yourself I don't have to do three sets I just have to do this one rep and then you look back you will have finished the entire workout and you will be so damn proud of yourself. And I'll be proud of you too. Cardio, who's ready for some cardio tips? You guys, I know how difficult cardio can be sometimes. And I know, for example, like you're on the Stairmaster, right? And you're going, you're going, and you have that pain face again. It's almost like if you're if you're not aware to your emotional state or your mental state, you can allow that to take over and it makes it more painful than it actually is. So bring yourself back to reality. You're in, you're in that state, it's hard, it's getting uncomfortable. Just look down and go left foot, right foot. Was it really that hard? Actually, no. This whole thing's hard. I'm struggling in this cardio session, but was my left foot, right foot, was that actually that hard? It wasn't. Let me just do that again, and let me just focus on that, and then you do it again. Left foot, right foot. That's something I want you to tell yourself. Whether you're doing a cardio session or you're going through the hardest moment of your life, left foot, right foot it, and you'll get through it. Okay, let's talk about a mental health cardio session. Sometimes I do cardio sessions literally just for my mental health, so this is something you could apply to your prep as well, but I like to use a song like an EDM style song where it has like a melody, it has a build up, it has a drop, and then the melody again. Because what I like to do is I like to just get into the movement and the melody's going, the beat starts to build. When the beat starts to build, that's when you start to go up, 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 and you, you get ready to sprint. And then the beat drops, you sprint, you go with the beat, and then it goes back to the melody. That's when you rest and you go back down and you go with the melody. And then the beat drops again. And so you do those hills with it. And it's really awesome because one, you're going to feel amazing. You're going to feel positive listening to that kind of music and two it's a really great way for you to detach yourself from I'm doing cardio to burn fat or I'm doing hit style training no you're just vibing with the music right when the music's going hard you're going hard so regardless if it's rap or it's EDM or whatever style music you like to listen to use music in that way and that will become and I, I call it a mental health cardio session because you're taking the physical um, things out of it like you're not doing it for hit cardio you're not doing it to lose weight or whatever. You're doing it to get that high, that runner's high, those endorphins going because those will make you feel so much better and it'll help you with whatever it is that you're dealing with. Another thing that is a huge tip for cardio is I really like to use my cardio sessions for my visualization. So visualization is something that is huge. You guys, I can't tell you how many times I have seen myself coming out of that red O, the Olympia O. I've seen it in my head so many times. I've even 
seats like right now see like the judging panel and all the judges and like the whole crowd like I've seen it so many times utilize your cardio sessions you know get going get feeling good and once you're feeling good get into that visualization and visualize every single moment every single thing that you're gonna walk through I visualize myself like in the lineup before I even go on stage I visualize myself practicing my posing I visualize myself from a third person point of view coming through that O. I visualize myself as myself on stage looking out at everyone as I'm posing and how I'll feel and even like how the tan smells and how you know my hair is gonna feel and I, I mean I imagine every little detail I see it so clearly so I think visualization is huge I think it's powerful and whether it's related to a competition prep or it's related to just goals that you have for yourself in your life that aren't related to competition at all I think it's huge and it's powerful and when you have those endorphins going there's something magical about that you guys your mind is so much more powerful than you know the thoughts that you allow yourself to focus on that's what becomes reality in your life if you haven't caught on to that be really intentional about that it's a good thing but it could also be a bad thing if you allow yourself to focus on the negative things that are happening in your life or focus on the negative aspects of yourself or of prep or of these things that's what you create if you're looking around in your life and you're wondering why these things are so difficult look at your mindset where is it at oftentimes those things are very very related so if you find yourself in that spot choose to take ownership of your thoughts choose to take ownership of your mindset turn that shit around man we all go through it we all go through the hard times you just have to choose to be in ownership of your mind the world is in a fight for your mind because here's the thing there's good and there's bad in the world and the bad in the world knows that if it can control your mind it gets access to your whole life so stop giving it access okay so in prep we've briefly covered you know your physical training your cardio your nutrition these things are all super important they're like the baselines of prep but in prep you really need to look at yourself and take so massive control over every single thought every single action every single thing that you're allowing into your life is it making you a better version of yourself are you being more peaceful are you being more joyful more kind more loving because here's the thing life and people and energies and frequencies these are all real things like people are operating on frequencies whether they realize it or not so one person that is operating on a frequency of negativity and disappointment and being short-tempered and being annoyed by everything they're operating at a very low frequency someone who is incredibly intentional with every single thought every action every thing that they speak every word that comes out of their mouth and they're encouraging and they're joyful and they don't allow other people or situations to steal their peace they're operating at a frequency up here what kind of results do you think these people are going to create what kind of results do you want to create something that you really should pay attention to is your spiritual life as well spirituality is huge you guys for me especially when I'm in prep but always like always it's so important but even more so when I'm in prep if I'm not focusing on my spiritual life and I'm not feeding that part of myself everything else feels starved as well but when I'm feeding that part of myself when I'm feeding my relationship with God everything else gets so much better so for me I found personally that of course I'm taking care of my mental my physical my nutrition all of those things but spiritual has to come first for myself that looks like my morning routine I wake up and that has to be the first thing that I do if the first thing that I do is I wake up and I feed that part of myself which for me looks like prayer and my devotional and reading my Bible the inspired Word of God which has oh, inspired me so much it's given me so much like life from the inside out not like the personal development world is amazing and it's great and positive affirmations are great and focusing on positivity is great but it doesn't produce like this wellspring of life from the inside out and that's what God's inspired word that's what the word of God has done for me there's been times when I've asked for direction or I've gotten led to certain verses literally about being an athlete and about practicing excellence like these things are biblical principles and for a reason and like life is just so much better when I'm in alignment with the things that are in there and you know I even got a verse this morning and it was Isaiah 43 5 and it says fear not I am with you and I am with you are words that like God has directly spoken to me before and it's a promise for all of his children it always comes exactly when I need it so for me it's not just the physical it's not just the nutrition it's not just the mental but like the most important thing is the spiritual as well so guys if you want to have the best mindset for prep if you want to have the best prep you've ever had if you just want to have the best life you've ever had focus on these things get your mind right make every single move that you make so intentional don't be around people that are gossiping don't follow Instagram 
Instagram pages that are full of negativity or hate or making fun of other people. Look at everything as an energy. Do you want to be absorbing that energy? Do you want that energy to become your reality and be a part of your life or not? Because if you don't want it to be a reality in your life, stop feeding your mind with it. Stop feeding your heart with it. Stop feeding your soul with it. Like start making decisions that are best for you in the long run. Sorry, my camera cut off. Your mind is one of the most powerful tools. So start taking charge of it. Start taking responsibility for what you allow into your mind and start executing, start taking action right after you're done with this video after you like and comment and subscribe, of course. I want you guys to sit down and make a list of action steps of how you're going to implement whatever it was in this video that spoke to you. If you watch this entire video, it means that something was speaking to you. So how are you going to implement that into your life? Create action steps and make sure that this week you implement even just one thing from this video. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please comment down anything, any feedback or comments or suggestions, or just say hi below. I would love to know who's watching. I go through and I read all of them, especially before I do the next video. So I love you guys so much and I will see you in next week's video. I don't want to end the video without giving a little shout out. I want to say thank you to James Rios on the last video. He said thank you for the transparency. It really helped. Caroline said she's saving for her steady state cardio and she loves the vlogs. Charlotte wants to know, how tall are you, queen? I'm five five and a half. Can't find it, but Haley said something about, I love this video because I love the talk on mindset. Girl, then you were going to love the video that I just made right now that you just watched, hopefully. Nala said she's going to share the last video with her clients. So Nala, I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for commenting and thank you for sharing my YouTube channel. I appreciate it. Okay, that's it. I love you guys so much. Comment below and I will talk to you in the next one. Bye.